the second reading and thereafter uh, fast track the completion of the parliamentary process in regards to the building bridges initiative so far it has stalled these the, the, uh, the, they were supposed to have a meeting on april 1st but that meeting could not take place due to the president's uh, order on uh, covid 19 regulations now it was pushed forward now the committee in regards to this in parliament in both the senate and the national assembly has uh, have both not been able to you know come to agreements in regards to the building bridges initiative report that report should they wait for this particular report in parliament or should parliament continue having the conversation without the report remember we also have the public participation report that should also uh, that we we are waiting for should we continue without that particular report these are questions that we are trying to understand in regards to this the building bridges initiative uh, 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 today i'm joined by benson nyagaka he is a political analyst karibu sana benson thank you also joining me is Kennedy Kigen, a youth leader. Karibu sana Ken. Thank you very much. Be welcome. part of this conversation. The hashtag as always is Y in the morning at Y254 channel on Twitter at Ram Aguko on Twitter. On Facebook at Y254 channel and at Ram Aguko. Make sure that you drop in your thoughts. We shall sample them up. I shall sample them up as you continue with this conversation this particular Monday morning. Youth and politics starts now now ken let me start with you um when we are talking about parliament uh bbi and parliament uh should we continue you know to pass the building business initiative regardless of the committee and what the committee comes out with uh currently what we are seeing is uh i think what is happening is a state of let's say mistrust mistrust which is playing out in in parliament uh, i think uh, bbi has its owners and I think even the owners are not agreeing on some of these things. So even the committee, it was set up by these guys who came up with the BBI. So uh, whatever is happening is uh, what, what I call the play which is happening under the table. Mm. Uh, I think the guys are realizing that, wait, so uh, the end goal was maybe to come up with political alliances that will form the next government. But now a mistrust is beginning to build up between uh, the former prime minister and Uru Kenyatta. So the guys are telling their, their committees and their members, you guys, you know what, you can hold on. Let's first agree on some of the things, then we can move forward. But irregardless, uh, there are things which are at play, which we need to consider. Number one, uh, I think there is a court case, mm -hmm. uh, which, uh, which is happening, considering if the due procedure was followed in as, as far as uh, following the implementation of BBI is, is concerned. And at the same time, the committee as I say, but either way, well, mm -hmm. the parliament, can, they are at liberty because once it's passed from, from uh, the, the, the counties, the, the parliament is next. So the only thing which can stop them is the, is the courts. But, uh, the, but the, committee, committee, the committee doesn't have a say. It doesn't, it doesn't, have, uh, it doesn't have the weights. You know, the question is, then what is, what is the re relevance of the committee in this whole process? Because they were supposed to come up with a report and Parliament is waiting for that report, then if Parliament can, t can continue without that report, then the committee's effectiveness is null and void. Ben? Uh, I think uh, uh, that question is quite varied, and uh, it raises the, the, the question of to understand uh, what has happened to the Building Bridges Initiative, uh, particularly the President and the the former Prime Minister, the Honorable Ray Odinga. Mm. We know that building uh, BBI is, is all about inclusivity. It's all about, uh, actually it's a political game. Because inside the BBI, one of the issues there is how can we be inclusive uh, and include all regions in the formation of the new government. That's why there's a talk about having a, a premier, mm. having a, maybe a deputy premier, a president, a deputy president, and all these kind of positions so that we are able to include all uh, regions in our country to the formation of the new government so that we run away from uh, uh, violence. Uh, after the elections, we have been witnessing uh, ethnic type of violence. Mm. Uh, but uh, you see now, the, the issue is, uh, are the, the two leaders 
uh, giving us uh, this product? Are they coming out to tell us what's happening? That's why the, uh, over the weekend we saw press reports that the former premier and the president they are moving forward to have a meeting, have a discussion, and maybe tell the nation what's going to, what's going to be uh, about the, the BBI. But at the same time, there have been also claims that there could be a rift between, as some political analysts say, that there could be a rift between the president and the Honorable Raila Odinga. But you see, we cannot uh, authoritatively be in agreement with the claims. Mm. We cannot depend on claims. We want to, to hear from the president and the former premier uh, what's happening uh, about the BPI. W w I'm sure they are aware that the Kenyans are uh, anxious mm. to know the progress of the BPI uh, because it is going to, to be a, a big factor in the formation of a new Kenya if it's passed. And uh, because we know, I've seen the president being very much inclusive. I've seen him uh, most of the time uh, holding talks with the leaders from uh, both political divides. So let us not uh, actually uh, uh, say that the BPI is not working. Let us give them t time mm -hmm. and hear from them. And then from there, now we can be able to make conclusions. Now that BPI is in parliament, do individuals have any effect? Do these particular individuals, Honorable Raila Odinga, Honorable William Ruto, and Honorable and, and, and the President himself, have an effect on this conversation in Parliament? Of course, because uh, for, for the bill to be passed in Parliament, uh, it depends on the numbers which the, the, two, the three leaders have in Parliament. Okay. Kigan, what do you think about that? Uh, of course, I mean, um, the two leaders have a very big impact on the three yeah actually i've, I've added the third one yes <laughs> the three of them that, that, that's also the third one do they yes, exactly. individually have an effect that's yeah. why i said eh, yeah. if you can allow me yeah. that uh, the honorable Ray Odinga is the orange democratic movement party mm. as members who are in parliament from uh, various parts of the country at the same time our president as uh, the jubilee members and uh, the the deputy president uh, because now we are seeing some kind of lift between the deputy president and the president. He has members from the, from the lift valley who are supporting his maybe Asla movement. So it will depend on the kind of negotiation they will do with their members for them to be able to be in agreement to pass the BPI. And if the, the two leaders, for instance, if we see uh, the, pre, the, the deputy president and Raira Odinga coming together mm -hmm. in terms of ideology, uh, we are talking about political ideology, uh, the formation of the new government, if at all they are, their interests are going to be incorporated, then it means if they have the numbers, they'll be able to overpower the president and maybe pass the BPI. If, if, if that they, will be if, the if case. They, that is Honorable Ruto and uh, are you putting Raila in the mix? Exactly. exactly. But right, at the right. same let time also, let if me. the president uh, goes together with one of them, uh -huh. at the same time the BPI will pass. So let, one of them will lose the, 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 the advantage. Let me hear from Keegan. <laughs> mm. Yeah, if, uh, if Bonaben can allow me some liberty to, to give my opinion, I would say that um, looking at uh, how BPI, the, the fight has come, you'll realize that um, when it started, it started like a, a child between Raila and Uru Kenyatta. That was the handshake that came, uh, that brought about the, the BBI thing. And then, uh, of course, it evolved. And like, like I think uh, there was one wise, one wise man who said that you can say a word, then the word becomes bigger than you. The, the words outgro outgrows you. So the BBI, I think it has come to outgrow both of them, that they realize that, you know, at the end of the day, once we are past this thing, if we are not careful on where we will find ourselves post uh, the 2022 arithmetics, then probably we'll find ourselves in a mix. That is why you'd see um, when, when the rift is trying to build between Raila Odinga and William Ruto, I think um, somebody who's reconsidering some of their stance probably would say it's Raila. Raila probably is telling and marshalling his troops to try and probably... Uh, amend the, the, the BBI so that it can probably have, uh, let's say, a second powerful person in, 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 the, in, the, in the next government. Mm. That is a powerful premier. Because as it is uh, in the BBI currently, 
uh, the prime minister would be would be a, like an employee of, of the president because he'd be at the mercy of the president. The president can hire and fire him at the same time. So, uh, of course, using the, the numbers of the political arithmetics. Mm -hmm. So what is happening is um, I think they are considering some of their stance. And what I'm foreseeing maybe in the coming days is um, maybe they'll try and, and, and make a premier, uh, the post, to be slightly more powerful. Could this be the reason why we are having this uh, stalemate? Actually, that is the whole point. That uh, people are reconsidering their positions. Yes, they are considering their position that they realize probably uh, if, you know, they say when you're creating policy, create a policy that even when, you're in, even when your worst enemy is in power, you'll still be safe. And I think they are realizing that, well, according to what they are setting, uh, if, if you will be on the other side of, of the arithmetic, then chicken will be coming home to roost. Do you, do you agree with that? Uh, partially I'm in agreement, but uh, partially I'm also in a disagreement. Mm. Uh, the reason is that uh, the, the president and the former premier, when they came up with the handshake, they put it very clear to the people of Kenya that BPI is not about uh, 2022 elections. The former premier and the president said that BPI is not about themselves getting positions in government. They said PPI is about Kenya. The, how can we be able to stay together as a nation, depending on from various regions where we come from, and how can we be able to share resources and power so that we are able to run away from uh, electoral violence, violences which we have witnessed in the country. But these issues of and even sharing re resources and power, everything, are the reasons why Kigen is saying that... Uh, People are ch now changing their position, that now they are now realizing that this thing isn't what we signed up for. Uh, not really, uh, because inside the BBI, uh, when you are talking about inclusivity and regions, we, the, the BBI spells very clearly that we are going to be, to be able, if we pass it as mm. Kenyan people, mm. we should be having the president, the deputy president, the premier, and his two deputies, uh, if it's passed by, by the Kenyan people. And uh, if it's passed, it means that uh, the, the major argument is that the winners will not take it all. Uh, the way it has been that if you win, you will take the whole government and uh, the other people, you know, coming from other regions, may, they just come to cry before you to, to be, so that they, 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 are, they are part of government. Now, so if, 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 if I'm to, to, to come to Kigana, yes, yes. there is the issue of uh, amendments. Yes. You said that now people are reconsidering their positions. Uh, ben, you mentioned that uh, it is for the people yes. to reduce the issues to do with the winner takes it all. Yes. Now that the BBI is in parliament, is it possible for, for it to be amended in parliament? Yeah, I think it's, it's possible uh, because, I mean, it's their role. But they, it, it just gone through public participation it has gone through of which that's a st still a debate mm -hmm. but it has gone through the counties yeah uh, i think if, if if recently you could hear remarks from somebody like uh, orengo uh, i think the minority leader of, of of the senate i think he was saying that if you're saying that there are constituencies which are need to be added for mm -hmm. example 70 can we try and identify where they are supposed to be uh, to be added like they are trying to go down to the specifics so that it doesn't appear like it's, it's just good for, for the show, but in real sense, there are implications which are not in, in the public limelight. So uh, probably what, what is happening is they are trying to, to get more deeper into, into the, the conversation. Mm -hmm. And I think with time, things are going to build up more. And probably there are going to be a lot of changes that will be done. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's, it's, it's sealed... Uh, I, 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 it's still an open book, yes. Your, your thoughts in, in, in this, amending the BBI in Parliament, possibilities of that happening? Of course, yes, because uh, one of the functions which is given to Parliament by the law, mm. by the Constitution of Kenya, is to uh, amend laws and is also to pass bills to, be, to, to become laws. So BBI is, is appeal. And this bill, when it has been taken to the, to the parliamentarians, 
they are our representatives because all of us, uh, 45 million Kenyans, we cannot go to parliament and uh, do amendments. So they will be able to do it on our behalf. So mm -hmm. we will be asking our members of parliament to actually exercise uh, sincerity and also exercise that kind of function and mandate which we have given to their office to ensure that when this BBR has been amended from parliament, when it goes to the people now, for us to exercise our vote as the Kenyan people, it will be uh, having the proper content, it will be the proper document for the Kenyan people to, mm -hmm. be, to be able to vote for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There is the, the issue of the 70 constituencies. So we have the sharing out of the, the proposed 70 constituencies and the introduction of a slam upgrade fund. Yes. Uh, now this is uh, what is actually uh, causing a, a lot of stalemate um, in Parliament. It is the centre of the BBI standoff uh, at the Joint Justice Committee in Parliament. Uh, what, what are your thoughts about this? The Slum Upgrade Fund, how should it be handled? Keegan. Yeah, uh, I think um, politics, they say in, in a nutshell, is uh, it's, it's just how resources are, being going, as, are going to be shared. Basically, that is what politics is all about. The reason why they, there's always glamour and fight in, 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 I think, politics is because of how resources are going to be shared. Mm. And um, looking at, for example, the, the slum upgrade fund and all that, I think uh, probably there's, there's a big issue because, of course, there are existing slums. But mm. how do we share these resources? Amongst... Now that we have, we have 70. Exactly, now that, now that we have 70. So, uh, again... Um, you know, in government, there are a lot of spending. There is the spending which happens uh, from, from the budget. The, there are some funds which are allocated to some functions. And then there are what we call the pork barrel spending, where uh, the, the person in power can just decide uh, to throw some resources to, to probably their, their specific places so as to try and gain favor from the locals. So um, I think what is happening is... Uh, they are trying to, I understand. I'm saying the reason why all this is happening is they're trying to get deeper. Because how do you, how do you now uh, allocate these resources? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Mr. Ram. Uh, from, my, from where I sit, uh, we want to be able to be very sensitive when it comes to serving the, the Kenyan people. First of all, Mr. Ram, we must be very sincere with ourselves and with what we do right from us as individuals and as communities and even as Kenyan republics. Why do I say this? If you go to advanced countries uh, like uh, Germany, like America, where the counties come from, the federal system, it starts for all the way from, from America to Germany and it, it goes around the world, it comes to Kenya. We call it counties in our, for, for our case. Uh, we see members of parliament or members of the Senate being servants of the people. If we are going to increase, uh, my argument is, if we are going to increase the number of constituencies to 70, the parliamentarians should also be, be able to say that let them also reduce the, the salaries for members of parliament so that we don't move this part into the common manaji. Mm -hmm. Because if you, you are aware that uh, our members of parliament are one of the highest paid uh, parliamentarians in the world and yet we are a, a, a developing nation and uh, when you consider other countries which are ahead of us in terms of economics uh, they are paid less so if we also want to increase the number of members of parliament let us also reduce the salaries of members of parliament so that we don't pass this burden to the, to the common humanity which is struggling out there uh, for instance, now we are, we are experiencing COVID-19 and you know the economy is not doing very well. Mm -hmm. Most people have lost their, their jobs. Uh, others have lost their loved ones. And we, we want to say comfortably that let us increase the number of members of parliament to 70. Secondly, I want to observe that uh, uh, what is the issue of increasing the number? Is it about efficiency or is it about resources or is it about the population? But I'm, 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 I'm also wondering, um, what, is, what should be the procedure of even creating a constituency? Uh, actually, if I can answer you that, mm. the, the procedure of creating a constituency is dependent on uh, the, the geographical space which it occupies, the right. area. Number two, mm -hmm. it depends on factors of population. 
if the population is very high in an area, for instance, in some areas in Mount Kenya, where the population is very high, places like uh, Kisi, mm -hmm. where the population is very high, you'll be able to create a constituent so that you can be, the, the member of parliament can be able to reach out to other areas which cannot be reached yeah. out. Uh, I, I remember the, the, I, the issue of one man, one yeah. dollar. I, I, yeah. Actually, I, I totally disagree with uh, Buona Ben in principle and, and in form because uh, I don't think that increasing the number of, uh, of let's say, members of parliament will solve some of the problem. Because even what we are seeing is uh, what happened from the transition between uh, the Kibaki government where there are, they were 210 members of parliament to this parliament where they are now 290 plus, uh, let's say, the, the, the nominated, it, it comes to around 367 members of, of parliament. And trying and look at their, what they are delivering. Mm. You cannot say it's substantial because I think they are so crowded in parliament, they cannot even debate, uh, I mean, like, in a parliament of 360, in a session where only about 10 members can, 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 can talk, let, let's think of how we can solve our problems without creating more problems. For example, look at uh, big states like the United States of America. There are few members of parliament who can be able to deliberately deliver and discuss the problems that are ailing the nations and come up with tangible solutions. So uh, I think that is why I, I, I find the, the, the debate about uh, BBI as, as being dishonest. I don't think it's about uh, solving the solution. For me, I think it was to creating uh, alliances and arithmetic for, for the succession politics. Mm -hmm. But looking at the problem, for example, the problem of the winner take it all. How does uh, the BBI solve it, considering the fact that it is the winning team that are going to fill the position of the prime minister, the deputy prime ministers, and the deputy president, and then the the, the, the opposition will only be will only be have what we call the official office of the opposition leader. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, what is happening is they are just changing names and creating rooms which are new and unique. Uh, as, as time goes by. And that is why I think um, there's a French proverb where translated in, in English says that the more things change, the more they remain the same. So at the end of the day, um, they are just creating, uh, I mean, the opposition to be a, an opposition. They are creating the majority leader to be the prime minister. I mean, there's nothing really that is changing, which is substantial. They're changing the name of the title. Exactly. But the position uh, remains the same. <laughs> essentially, Mr. Uh, Ram, yeah. Uh, I think my brother here is quite in agreement with what I was saying because I do not say that they increase the numbers of members of parliament. I said that we must be able to observe and find out why do we need to increase the 70 constituencies. Do you think we should increase it? At my level, at, uh, I'm in agreement with him at, at, at this stage now that uh, it is not important at all because we must be able to, first of all, examine uh, issues which uh, deal with efficiency, uh, use of resources, uh, try to factor in the common humanity out there, how, uh, why should he carry the pardon and probably is not uh, able to, to be accessed and maybe uh, be served adequately. Mm. Uh, I think those are the issues. And uh, I want to observe that uh, we, we talked about the slum, the slum, that mm. is a slum fund. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I really want you to think about it. Uh, the the slum upgrade. Fund. Yes, yes, the way I think about it. Uh -huh. what, what are you calling a slum? In Kenya, have we come up with the parameters to define what's a slum and which slums should be upgraded? You know, these are some of the issues. Because <laughs> if you, you want to tell us that the slums, when you are talking about slums in Kenya, you are talking about Matari, you are talking about Kibera. But the, when you touch on development studies, you know, I'm coming from the world of uh, political science mm -hmm. and the international relations uh, uh, as a master degree owner and uh, uh, you know when we are talking about slum we are talking about uh, lack of lack of improved housing lack of water lack we, of hygiene and do we have that in uh, kenya it is everywhere that's why i'm saying uh -huh. what, what so, are you calling so, a slum so if you're saying uh, a slum uh, upgrade uh, up, is which slum now it should be upgraded uh, all then, uh, in all constituencies. We, we <laughs> <laughs> For example, if, if, that is, if, if that is the case. Yeah, you, you see, <laughs> you see, Ram, 
<laughs> when you are talking about slums, you are talking about lack of hygiene, lack of water, yeah. lack of improved housing. In fact, if you go even to some places in Nairobi, let us give an example pipeline. Mm -hmm. You will see very nice structures uh, built using uh, cement and stones and uh, bricks. And you say, that's not a slum. What's the difference? You know, uh, slum also means lack of space. Lack of space. Lack eh? of space. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> lack of space. <laughs> I, 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 I totally disagree. <laughs> I think you... Let me try to understand what you're saying. <laughs> Where there is lack of space, yes. that is a slum. I, I've given quite a number of uh, parameters for uh, lack of space let me start lack of... to do that kind of uh, remuneration mm -hmm, mm -hmm. number one mm. lack of space where there's congestion okay number uh -huh. two where mm. there, there is a lack of infrastructure to transport human waste and even uh, uh, water uh, you know num number uh, number three mm -hmm. where there's lack of uh, storage and uh, lack of management of uh, uh, waste materials waste materials where there's lack of management of waste materials, okay. where there's waste is just uh, spread everywhere, mm -hmm. everywhere in the compound, everywhere. That is slum. Yeah, uh, where there's lack of where there's lack of uh, 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 improved housing conditions. But you'd consider yeah. pipeline a slum? Of course, it's a slum. The only difference is that place they, they have only used the uh, br bricks and cement. But if you go to Madare, they have used the mapati. Uh, so what's the difference? There's no difference at all. <laughs> all those are slums. Okay, yeah. So yes, yes. you should be able to tell us which kind of slum you are talking about. And they should be able to come up with the proper specifications so that some other sections of the country should not feel that they have been sort Is, is Buruburu a slum? Uh, uh, yeah, in fact, the, this, all these places are slums. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think... Uh, I think Bonaben should revisit his <laughs> definition of Islam <laughs> because um, according to I, according to, according Ram, to parameter, a house, I mean, <laughs> let us be realistic, a house, look here, let me a house <laughs> where you live having yeah. only one door and only one window and uh, inside yeah. there, a father and a, uh, and a, uh, a father and a children and a wife they let's, stay there let but it's a permanent house let, let what, me, how can you define it let, Is it me, slum? let me hear from <laughs> <laughs> let, let, let me try and help bona bona ben kidoga um <laughs> having studied economics from yeah. the university of nairobi yes uh, i think among the biggest parameters which were being used to measure slum is i think economic well-being and um, more than that i think he defined well, <coughs> and, then, and then he got it wrong. It's coming back to me. He defined well. He said that uh, a slum is yeah. a place where there is lack of, uh, of course, number one is space. Number uh -huh. two, is population. It? Is it uh, Number two, lack of facilities. But again, he came, he came to lack judge. Lack of infrastructure. There's the, the, what we call fallacy. There's what we call fallacy. You're making, a, you're making the right deduction, but you're making a wrong conclusion. So on how to arrive at a slum, he got it right. But <laughs> where, where, he ca where he comes to the conclusion of mm. saying that pipeline is a slum, that is where he got it wrong. Because looking at pipeline, mm. well, there, it, it is a populated place. Uh -huh. But they have all the basic, all the basic needs. Like uh, the health centers are there in plenty. Look at water. There is no shortage There's of water no there. Hygiene. There is hygiene in, in, in West pipeline. management is not there. There is what so you much. It, you know, this is, this is what is causing <laughs> that statement in parliament. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> on slums. Yeah. So, by definition, you feel we do not have that concrete definition of what a slum is in Kenya. No, no, no. no. Uh, according to uh, according to even WHO, there are correct parameters which are used to identify a slum. And mm -hmm. if my friend Agu can make use of Google, he can go to Google and search for slums in Kenya. It will give him uh, the parameters. It will give him uh, the, the slums which are in existence. And I can tell him for sure that <laughs> in Bakasi or Pipeline is neither there, uh, <laughs> and I'm telling there. The there. Buru is a slum. Uh, of course, <laughs> it is. So I think yeah. uh, probably let uh, people come out. In fact, you should tell the people outside there to tweet. Mm. All right, uh, let them tweet you, and you'll see the results. Mm. But I, you can, you can uh, do the um, research. Uh, I, I challenge I, you to take let, the research. Let me quote. Huh? Keep it, keep it, period, member of parliament. <laughs> well, you made me remember <laughs> 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 my day. <laughs> he said that the, uh, he said, and I quote. 
there were people who thought you can open the bill and make amendments. The issue is just to bring the report to the House for uh, Futuristic Reviews, Article 257 done on a popular initiative yeah. of the constitution is clear the bill goes to a referendum whether parliament has approved it or not yes the report is for mps to have their input but not to amend the bill what do you think about that um yeah i mean it could have a point mm -hmm. but at the same time there are a lot of loopholes looking at how the bbi report was was presented there are a lot of things which were not in, in conclusion. Like there were there are gray areas, eh? mm -hmm. I can call them the gray areas, where it is not yet interpreted and it's not interpretable as it is. For mm -hmm. example, when they're talking about the, the, the 70 constituencies, I, 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 have they identified these 70 constituencies? So what I'm saying is there are gray areas which whether he likes them or not, these are things which needs to be to be thought about and to be really uh, uh, filled in terms of in terms of uh, the BBA. Your, your thought, the member, member of parliament saying that, that, the, that the report is just for the MPs only uh, to have their input but not to amend the BBI? Uh, not really because uh, one of the legislative functions which has been given to members of parliament is to do amendment and also even to pass bills to do to become laws. So members of parliament can do both. They can give their input mm -hmm. and at the same time they can amend the, the bill before it is taken to the public for uh, an electoral process. All right, I want us to just wrap it up at that point. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for uh, giving us uh, your input in regards but, uh, to this. Allow me, Mr. Ram, uh, before you, you close, yes. uh, to say specifically that uh, most people are trying to misunderstand what is development. Uh, this is, I'm trying to come back to that area because we have talked about slums, we have talked about uh, how we are supposed to divide, uh, divide our seven constituencies mm -hmm. for the people of Kenya. You see, if we build a road, for instance, I want to ask you, if we, we are building roads, tarmac roads in Nairobi, we have tarmac roads in Nairobi, true or false? True. They run all the way from here to the airport. But what is the essence of tarmac in the road? It is to reduce the number of hours you are moving from here at this point to the airport. It must be able to accelerate your movement from point A to point B so that you take shorter time. Then we are talking about development. Right. We have made progress. Right. But if you are taking five hours from here using the same, same tarmac road to the airport, is that development? Okay. That's why I was saying that. <coughs> I, want us to, to, I want us to wrap it up. Uh, my we brother. must be very, very much specific and very much honest uh, in this kind of discussions so that we ensure that these factors are, uh, are put you. in place. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, my brother, uh, I w uh, it has been a pleasure. Thank you so much for your input. Uh, that is uh, Ben Nyagaka and uh, Kennedy Keegan. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Uh, today we are learning, pipeline is. <laughs> well, it is a pleasure having you, uh, my brother. We should have this conversation off air. Yes. And then we... <laughs> my name is Ram Maguko. Uh, let's take a short break. Uh, that brings us to the end of this discussion. Coming up next is a conversation on art. Art as a career. In studio, I am with... Uh, Nini, uh, already, uh, my guests are already, already in studio. Brian Ogana and Brian Mwanzo coming up in a bit. Let's take a short break. We'll be back after this break. <laughs> <laughs>